run the game and shoot what set as you claim it. Uh, it's that eggs box, spin the block his legs like fast talker, no wriggling, move walk and sell a moon rock just to make dividends. Uh, you in traffic with family? That flash make it a portrait. Gun kick back, not grannies from porches. David on the scene, you know that it's scorching. Uh, what's the matter with King? No response to the saying, advance to the line, advance to the payment. You run the game and shoot what set as you claim it. You already know the time, told my boys to hold the line. We gon' shoot it out in seconds, leave you posted like a vine. Buy your head down to the king, leave your roses at the shrine. We stay ready for the war, just need the king to drop the sign. Say what you running from, what you running from? I'm with my team, we bleed green, that's what you wanted, huh? Say what you running from, what you running from? I'm with my team, we bleed green, that's what you wanted, huh? This what you wanted. This what you wanted, huh? Peace and blessings and welcome back to Xbox Frontline News with your boy, The King. And today we're going to talk about a lot of things. We have a lot of stuff that's going on. We have AI taking over and I explained that to you before, but you guys didn't listen. So now I give you a little bit of hard evidence. We got a little stock prices, a little money going up, you know, where to invest your cash, stuff like that. But we also have a remake, a remaster, a redone, a redo. Let's try to make it better for me and you. That's kind of sad. But the king needs to make a decision on the game, and I need your help. So, without further ado, let's get into exactly what everything is about today. If you're in the market for a new SSD, external SSD for your PlayStation 5 and your PlayStation 4, um, Seagate has you covered. All right, so Seagate has the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4 SSD. The one terabit model goes for uh, $200, and the two terabit model goes for $305. So uh, they connect uh, USB-A to USB-C and USB-C to US USB-C connections. You're able to um, hook them up pretty effectively with no problem. Um, in the case with the best SSDs for the PlayStation 5, you'll be able to transfer games to and from the console's internal storage with the CK Game Drive external SSDs. This can save you from having to delete games entirely, thus avoiding the, length, the lengthy re-download process. And also, if you guys don't want to do surgery on your PlayStations, I mean, you definitely could just pick this up. Plug and play. I think this is how it's supposed to be, but I know Sony themselves understood how costly it would be. So they gave you the other solution. And um, basically, this this is for me. I wasn't the guy that was going to rip off the wings of my PlayStation, and I'm still not going to be that dude. Uh, but I don't buy enough games to warrant a one terabyte drive uh, external or a two terabyte drive. But if you're in the market to get so get them, one is for 200, the other one's for 300. Uh, maybe this information helps you out. But Seagate has you. And I think that's cool because I have several SSD external drives for my Xbox consoles and they actually work out really well. So if any of you PlayStation guys need that, uh, Seagate got you. Uh, go check them out. It definitely will help your storage situation. Just very quickly for those guys that's looking to invest in some form of fashion, let me give you a quick uh, rundown really quickly. You know, uh, Microsoft stock, and this is a prediction price for uh, the next year out. So Microsoft stock has been a millionaire maker for decades with a stock split adjusted for the IPO price of uh, 14 cents, which means today's stock price of $436.35. The stock is up <laughs> a staggering percentage. <laughs> Right here, staggering percentages that would have turned a thousand dollar investment of Microsoft IPO into a uh, 4.4 million today. So, uh, they give you a prediction based on where they're putting their money, right? So, Microsoft key drivers are the Azure Cloud Service Productivity Software and LinkedIn dominate Microsoft future potential. Microsoft acquisition of Activision boots the gaming segment enhancing its competitive edge in the personal computer market. And if you're looking at AI stock early in the AI growth uh, cycle, grab a complimentary copy of the next NVIDIA report. It's a software stock that could actually ride dominance in AI in returns of 10 times or more. So understand right now, Microsoft is at the leading edge in everything that is necessary. The biggest thing for us gamers, that this acquisition right here of Activision takes them to a different level in where they're delivering their software and it's a driving force in their stock this is the reason why that the xbox platform is going nowhere 
So when they tell you that um, Xbox won't be around, uh, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, Microsoft is heavily invested in that division. Expanding that division. And that is one of the pillars when it comes to their stock conversations, their gaming division. Apologize for your loss. Oh, that was your heart that skipped the beat that you realize Xbox is, will be on your neck for the rest of your life. And what I see as probably the worst generation in PlayStation history, the generations of the remasters and the remakes because they can't make a new IP or they can't uh, add on to existing IPs that they do have to make sequels. No, they're just uh, resorted into uh, making remasters and remakes of existing stuff that's already out. Uh, 2017 has been the time when Horizon Zero Dawn has been released, and now they are doing a remaster for the PlayStation 5 and the PC. Now, I don't know why the PC needs a remaster because the PC was running at the highest level, but um, I guess because their upcoming PlayStation 5 console needs to uh, have this with ray tracing and all this other stuff extra. I don't know, man. But I'm going to tell you right now, I do not uh, appreciate where they're going with it. I think, honestly, that they are themselves an issue and they are harming themselves uh, for the most part. Now, let's call a spade a spade. PlayStation has been coasting on their laurels this uh, whole generation. And this is not, I got to say, I got to give them, uh, I got to throw them a bone pause. These dudes got tossed into the bushes. And that was by Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan started something that could actually help the PlayStation brand. And, you know, Microsoft came and upset that Apple cart with acquiring ABK. And Jim wanted to do 12 games of services. And, you know, two of those games came out. One was successful. The other one wasn't successful. And then the roadmap for PlayStation seems really muddled and thrown into the bushes. You know, so from what we know is uh, one of those pillars was supposed to be uh, Concord. And Concord not panning out has definitely hurt what the structure looks like. But what they relied on heavily of this generation is remakes and remasters of existing properties that was already put out. Not more than four years ago, we got Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, complete edition on the PC, which was a complete edition from the PlayStation 4 version that came out on the PlayStation Pro and the PlayStation 4. And... Now they're releasing it for the PlayStation 5. That was only seven years ago. So just four short years ago, you got the PC version, which was, a, was supposed to be complete. Now, and seven years ago, you got the original version. So now you have, I passed those four short years, a remaster of that original game. And... Is this squeezing your fan base? Because how many remakes and remasters of the existing games that we're going to get that was from the last generation, not iterations of a new entries into the series, not Forbidden West 3, or, well, you know, uh, Horizon, what, Forbidden West was 2, and uh, Horizon whatever 3. Not that we get part one again, but remastered. And they're saying, oh, now we have some ray tracing and faster loading times. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that warranted? I don't think so. I don't think you should push your lack of a roadmap into taking existing IPs and assets, up them, and then putting them out to the public. I feel that's bad. It's horrible. PlayStation themselves are taking their fan base for granted and using them in a way that is is it's it's just not nice to see. 
I don't partake in a game that I don't need to partake in. But to actually have no games and then give them the same game that they purchased already a short time ago all over again with a little shine on it, knowing that you have no games, I can see why the PlayStation fan base is begging for Xbox games. Because Xbox is actually going to give you some new experiences that you haven't you know, tried yet. Xbox is actually going to see uh, if, if your gaming needs can be satiated by the titles that they do release. I know why next year you're eagerly anticipating uh, whatever day Indiana Jones drops or whatever day uh, Microsoft uh, sends over something like Grounded or Pentiment or Hi-Fi Rush or something like that because now you actually will have some games to play. It just sucks to see that the fan base is being beat in such a way that they can't tell what's from up or down. And it just really sucks really bad. I feel for you guys. But still, hashtag no PlayStation 6. You know how we do over here. We're going to run it up on them bums. I'm going to keep the boot on Khan's neck this whole generation. So this is the year-end investor um, reports that are going on that's happening at the moment. And EA is going all in on AI for video game design. And I believe that's a problem. If y'all know this channel, you follow this channel, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, Google researchers make a AI doom reaction and Tencent recently revealed initial researches into what could become an open world game generator. Now, Electronic Arts, the video game giant behind Battlefield and Sims and uh, FIFA, Fife, or whatever you're going to call it, has confirmed that we already sus what we already suspected. It's going all in on generative AI. Now, I know a lot of people told you that AI is a tool. And AI will be a tool that will be useful for you. But we're going to expound on this, right? And we're going to talk about what they're talking about right now is how this is what the company now is stating. This is their mission statement. The company now has over 100 novel AI projects underway as it aims 100 right now. EA has 100 right now. As it aims to accelerate how innovators, creators, and building entertainment experiences lead to self-expression, content creation, curation, and instant gratification. These things that they're talking about and pushing is a huge problem. And I'm going to talk about it because I didn't talk about Battlefield yesterday and I'm supposed to. EA's AI work is focused on, on three strategic areas, efficiency, expansion, and transformation. The first of those means doing things faster and at a higher quality through more iteration and more testing, and of course, more cheaply. Remember that part, cheaply. Meanwhile, expansion means giving developers an exponentially bigger canvas upon which they can create richer colors and paint more brilliant worlds with deeper characters, stories that mean that are more personal and nuanced. And finally, the area of transformation involves investigation, investigating potential new ways to play and watch games and create user generated content in ways that that hasn't been so far envisioned. Chief Strategy Officer Mir Vandela talked about experiments in which EA sees as a huge space of opportunity between user-generated experience and image, image imagination to gain. An area that the company is calling imagination to creation. This appears to be including sandboxes where players can create, modify games, and instantaneously use natural language through an AI model based on EA's own proprietary data set. We're going to get into this right now because I'm telling you, and if you don't really understand where I'm at with it, you guys are not seeing the forest for the trees. With over 100 different titles in development right now over at EA, you want to know why they can be so efficient and how they can actually get this stuff to market? AI. They're going to mask it as they're giving the developer the tool sets in order to go be creative and, and, and go create. That's how they're going to mask it. And I got to tell you, the, the loss of jobs, the fact that people aren't coming back to the industry, that's moving on to different industries because those jobs titles are no longer available. They're not going to explain that. They're going to make it seem like this is a good thing. 
this isn't a good thing. AI is changing the way they approach making games. And the problem with that is, is that at the expense of the worker. Now, they told you that they want to save on time, they want to be more efficient, and they want to do it cheaply. Well, the first thing to go when you want to do something cheaply is the labor force. So, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have a lot of pushback inside the comments, and these guys are going to tell me, well, King, uh, AI is a useful tool in order to achieve your goals and to make <clears throat> everything more efficient and easier and stuff like that. And some dudes keep bringing up the horse and buggy and all this other stuff. Like, they live the horse and buggy years. They understand what that means. It's, it's a level of ignorance that allows thought processes like that to even fester in our communities. But again, you're not the one being displaced and there's no concern for you. You have no concern for your fellow man because you can't allow innovation and progress to be halted in any way. And I get it. But I'm just here to report what's going on. And I will continue to explain to people exactly what's happening. Because without that, this stuff will go unchecked and it will continue to happen. At such a rapid rate, I don't know where we stand. What is being seen as the obvious square enix confirms lower than expected final fantasy 7 rebirth and final fantasy 16 sales and newly public financial reports profits unfortunately did not meet their expectations now we know that the playstation 5 had these games locked to their consoles by square signing exclusive deals which inadvertently destroyed other projects in the pipeline these games and those deals made making those games exclusive to the PlayStation 5 console, which supp supposedly has 61 million uh, units out in the wild, has not translated in anyone purchasing these games in mass. The financial results was originally shared in May 13th, 2024, months before yesterday's PlayStation, the PC release of Final Fantasy 16, which is safe to assume will give that particular sales metric a bump. A PC release of the Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, meanwhile, still hasn't been officially confirmed. Cairo also noted that the MMO profits were down. Attributing, attributing, to a lull in releases ahead of the launch of the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trial expansion pack, which was released following month in June. Reporting on already what appeared to be Square's failing profits, falling profits after the final financial results was delivered to investors in May, but today's publishing of the financial reports mean we can see details of Curio's statements firsthand. Throughout the financial reports, Curia attributed the decreased profitability of its games released on strategic <laughs> failings at Square Enix. Essentially, Square Enix publishing strategy has forced its new release to compete for sales with its own games, which is a shame. But we're going to get into this. We're going to get into the reason why these guys had to do layoffs, because they made deals with Sony, and we have to look at it for what it is. Apparently, something is amiss over at the Sony's numbers. See what happens when you lay with dogs? You wake up with fleas. You're a third-party company, and I think we beat this horse so bad. You are a third-party company. You distribute your games. Your games are supposed to be able to be played everywhere. The old regime 
tied allegiances to Sony. And I know it gets a little bit murky when you see stuff like, oh, they sold 61 million consoles. So it's safe to say that we put out our game, we're going to sell to at least half that fan base. I do not believe that they have 61 million consoles out there in the hands of actual consumers. I do believe that there's 61 million consoles out there. Where are they? I have no idea. But the sales numbers aren't indicative of that. And Square found out by tying themselves to the sinking ship that now they have to cut the rope and place these games in different places. PC being a prominent place in which to place games, they're having a tough time in getting these games over to PC because uh, if you look at everybody's videos, it's up. Final Fantasy 16 runs a little erratic in certain spots. Does that translate into profit? Well, they will probably see a bump in sales. But Final Fantasy VII Rebirth hasn't been announced for PC. I honestly feel that limiting themselves to one console has hurt, probably irreparably, destroyed their reputation amongst gamers and placed them in a position where it's do or die time. Square knows it. And I don't understand how Sony didn't put them in the best position to win by placing that game on actual consoles like the PlayStation 4. Because that was the only reason why PlayStation, um, the Final Fantasy VII remake was successful. This is indicative of the PlayStation 5 fan base. They do not buy games. They do not have 61 million units out there. Hashtag no PlayStation 6 is real. These guys are in trouble. And I expect Square to finally jump ship to go on the greener pastures. Shout out to Xbox. You know what it is. See you on the 24th. Love you. If anybody got a chance to watch my uh, Twitch channel, that's King David at ILP, uh, then you would have known this to be true. Fortnite's new Iron Man gear is ridiculously good. Even the overpowered Dr. Doom powers are struggling against it. Fortnite terrifying Dr. Doom power up may have finally met his match in the latest update, which added some seriously strong Iron Man gear to the Battle Royale. Earlier this month, Epic Games introduced what basically feels like an instant win button for Fortnite. Right now, there's a slim chance in every Battle Royale match you played that the Isles of Doom will spawn, which if successful, captured, you will transform you or one of your teammates into the Doom Chosen, giving you enough buff to basically become a walking boss battle. If uh, <laughs> quadrupling your health and shields wasn't enough, you get a, get access to a massive laser beam attack and a dive kick and a magical explosion and much, much more. Haven't got a chance to get it yet, and I can't wait to do it, and it'll be dope if I'm able to do it online. But um, Iron Man Gear Kit is ridiculous to this. Doom stood no chance against the new Iron Man Mythics. This is crazy. Uh, if y'all got a chance to watch it, um, I'll probably uh, show my recordings of it right now. This season of Fortnite is probably the best season that we've had in years. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm having such a great time. If you catch my stream today, me streaming on Twitch, as King David ILP at, uh, on Twitch, I was having such a great time. My boy Sinister joined me, Sinister X2, and my boy Slowmo Backslap. Slowmo Backslap got a chance to jump in and hang out with us. The guy with the, probably the best avatar that I've ever seen. And... It, it was such a great time. We had such, we had so much fun. But I had to cut it short because why? I have to make videos. I have to work, and I'm here. So, reporting this news is fun, but at the same time, I want a game because I'm a gamer and I got a habit. So, it is what it is. But as far as slow mo backslaps gamer picks, gamerpicks.com is the best place for you to get your gaming pick. Done. Go to Graphic God, where the only limitation is your imagination. That's GamerPicks.com. 
Go check them out. Go to Graphic God and tell them the King sent you. And you're going to get a 5% discount. That's GamerPicks.com, where the only limitation is your imagination. Shout out to Graphic God for everything that he does. He does wonderful work. But this Fortnite right now, the season is great. Last season was a little bit, ah, but I really like the season. I kind of like last season too, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stand. I'm not going to hold you. But right now, uh, you are on a mission to acquire the Iron Man armor in this game, to be honest with you, to actually uh, be able to have a, a, a locked on chance to win. But if you got that Captain America shield, you can fight it off. But the team with Dr. Doom gauntlets, and if you get a hold to the Dr. Doom um, armor and you turn it to God Emperor Doom, holy crap. I can't wait to do it. I hope to do it live on stream to be able to get a chance to turn to God Emperor Doom. It'll be something fun, something uh, great to see. But I'm having so much fun. So you have the Black Panther claws. You have uh, War um, War Machine's armor that's inside the game. It's so many different aspects of what Marvel brings to the table when it comes to Fortnite. They're knocking it out the park. And what can only be seen as lunacy? Scalpers are already profiting off the PlayStation 5 Pro. This drives on eBay because people don't seem to realize they never actually showed out. Those things are available in stores. People running out and buying disk drives right now for a PlayStation 5 Pro and expecting this to be like the PlayStation 5 situation. Nope, the price tag on the console itself hampers that from happening. So people thinking that these things are selling out and they're the highest sellers because scalpers have gone out and have done a markup on eBay. This is ridiculous in the set of finest, but the level of stupidity that I see uh, exhibited by PlayStation fans and actually thinking that this is a win, this is some type of dub. Actually, my boy, this is an incredible L. I told you dudes, scalpers have your stuff. Them PlayStations ain't out there and those sales numbers ain't real. Scalpers is just trying to make the money back. So all you guys talking about all these numbers and all this stuff is happening, nah. You know, the PlayStation disk drives, nah. The PlayStation stands, nah. It's stupid. It's actually stupid. With, with, with what's going on today in the marketplace, you can't tell if something is a success, if you can sell to something, if you can't sell to it, because these dudes will make you believe that there's 61 million units out there. It's not. So you would really think all those hard drives, all they sold out all over the place. Really, it's not. It's just resellers trying to resell you stuff. That's stupid. And what can only be confirmed as King David is right again, 98%. All the time, PlayStation's next state of play broadcast is coming next week. It's claimed Sony reportedly planning a PlayStation showcase for late September. Sony's next state of play, certainly next happening on the 24th, Jeff Grubb says. Also, King David said that weeks ago. But um, it's going to be a smaller showcase. It's going to be a showcase centered around third party and not first party stuff. Just saying. So remember when I told you guys that the PlayStation state of play would be in the second half of the month. It'd be like on the 24th of what is this? Um, September. And that, um, it will be right before the TGS show before Microsoft get a chance to, uh, go up on stage. Sony likes to do the stuff like that. Uh, try, try to, um, steal your thunder. And then they're going to show that, but it's going to be third party titles and no first party stuff, probably Forbidden West. Uh, well, not Forbidden West, Horizon. It'll probably be seen there now that that's announced. It's that. But at least they're there, right? Um, at least they're going to give you a state of play. They get a chance to talk about some PlayStation Pro games that are with third-party uh, partnerships. We'll show you PlayStation Pro enhancements. And they can show you existing titles that actually uh, benefit from the PlayStation 5 Pro enhancements. You know, these things are probably key to their launch strategy with the PlayStation 5 Pro. 
with drumming up interest because the rhetoric around it is probably piss poor at this moment. So Sony taking the initiative in order to uh, illuminate what their strategy is going forward. If you don't have a roadmap, at least you got a clear cut strategy and how you're going to get to next year uh, and this holiday season, because I don't know, it's kind of muddy for me. These are apparently the switch to leaked images. That is supposedly the Joy-Cons on the side. Here's the internals of the console. Right there, you can see that. It looks just like the Switch. Um, and it's the third one. This is uh, the size of this versus the larger size. Switch versus it, larger size. Larger size. So, pretty much more of the same, just more ro more robust, better switch stuff. You have another person claiming that uh, it has 12 gigabyte of RAM, two internal cooling fans, modern NVIDIA GPU architecture with DLSS, new dock internals, cooling fan, switch two sits between a Series S and a PlayStation 5. Apparently. Switch two. Apparently, um, these are the leaked images of, I guess, whatever. I don't know. I take everything with a grain of salt until they're official. Spec-wise, hmm. Images-wise, hmm. Look like 3D models uh, based off of something. I don't know, man. I saw something the other day with somebody having like a mock-up of it. I, I don't know, man. I want the official word from Nintendo because I know Nintendo knows how to keep a secret. If anybody knows how to keep a secret, it's Nintendo. Sony don't know how to keep a secret. Microsoft don't know how to keep a secret. That dude knows how to keep a secret. So until he says something, I don't believe anybody. You know, I got dudes champion. Oh, it looks like the same exact thing. Thank God they didn't go crazy. Mm. I like uh, Nintendo for being weird wonky and a little bit different that's that's my opinion of it i that's how i like them crazy side scrolling gi joe a side scrolling beat em up featuring gi joe characters is something that is to behold i'm not going to lie to you i like it um i used to play side scrolling beat em ups i used to watch gi joe so if I'm going to sit there and be like, yo, Joe, and knowing there's half the battle and all that other crazy stuff, yes, I'm down for it. The characters look great. You have the Baroness. You have Cobra Commander. I wonder if you have Destro. I wonder if you have Tomax and Sabop. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm into that. I'm, I'm into that. So G.I. Joe played a large part of my growing up as a kid. Yes, I had the toys, and yes, I used to sit there and play with G.I. Joes, and yes, you know, you have Snake Eyes, and, and you have, um, what, what's, what's this, the, the Shinobi dude? But regardless of what, I had a great time with G.I. Joe, and I do want G.I. Joe to come back. Storm Shadow, that's my guy. Uh, yo, I used to hate the bad guys, but Storm Shadow was the coolest, bro. I had so many Storm Shadows. I ain't even gonna hold you. I had like probably uh, uh, uh like a twenty of them because I had an army of ninjas. <laughs>
is not happening. What is this place? Keep it together, Lorne. Find a way out. Finally! Carter, this is not the time. I'm rather busy. Do not believe what you see. Bullcrap! You will get her this time! I won't let you! Let her go! Don't be afraid. You're safe now. I saved you. What the? Decadent look spooky as hell. That look crazy. I don't know what's real or what's fake. Decadent looks wild. I don't know if it's VR. I don't know what it is. It does look like it plays in VR, but um, piqued my interest. Brought it to you, dudes. Maybe I like it. Maybe I don't. But I, I am. I'm trying to get a game for Steam, and uh, I like playing first person games, first person shooters. And I'm going to show you a couple of first-person shooters right now. And it's three of them. It's just three, three of them, really quick. I'm going to show you three first-person shooters. And I want to hear your opinion on them. I want to hear your opinion. And I want to know which one you think that I should get. Y'all should, y'all, I want y'all to let me know which uh, first-person shooter I should get. It's three of them for my Steam Deck. Cross you, then they'll lock you up. No sun will hold you. Smash your way through the prison. First one is Chains of Fury, Volume 1. Did you like it? I don't know. But let me know. Hands of Necromancy 2 takes me all the way back to the yesteryear where games were simple and you just put them in with floppy disks and you were just having so much fun on your PC. Your PC made that stupid sound. So let me know if that was one that can actually make it happen.
Forgive Me Father 2. Looks dope. Is this the one? Has anybody played it? Please. I need your help. I need your help in playing a new game on my Steam Deck. Dear Diary, turns out I'm still good at doing a lot of bad things. And what the COI made me. And I'm not going back. Harding, I know you're listening. You can still come in. We've gone fishing. You've helped my son. Put this behind us. Bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I saw this. I am your beast. And I was like, mm, I need to add that to the list to see if somebody going to think they uh, I should play. it. Let me know. Maybe some games that I might stream. I don't know. So I started off as three and I like those three. But I saw I am your beast. And I was like, mm, daddy like that. So let me know. I am your beast. Two, uh, what's up? Let me know. So Sony bumbling and fumbling and misdirection in this whole situation. I don't know where they're going to go. I don't. It's, it's weird to see Sony looking like a ship without a rudder. But in all of this, Xbox is looking pristine. Stock prices go. Xbox is doing a thing. And when investors are looking for that division to bring in the dough to help those stock splits. That's crazy. And that leads me to understand that they're going to do whatever's necessary to gain more IPs in the next IPs war that's going to happen. So I fully expect Xbox to grow in size, probably double and triple within the next year and a half, probably acquiring Ubisoft and moving into a different stratosphere as far as a third-party developer go with first-party hardware, that's kind of crazy. You are forming a new level of a monopoly that will be seen by all and feared by many. But at the same time, they said we play anywhere. So if you like Game Pass, they throw it on your box. And speaking of a box that can probably have some Game Pass on it, that Switch 2... Now, I can't say I'm getting uh, ecstatic for it. I, I was kind of disappointed with the form factor and everything. It looks like the Switch one just to look like a little bit bigger. Whatever. I I don't know. That's that, I don't know. The house of Nintendo is into innovation and stuff like that. So I'm more down with that. So I don't know how I feel about the Switch 2 and its form factor and what it looks like. It looks like more of the same, to be honest with you. So hopefully... Hopefully that stuff is a fabrication, a farce, and we get the chance to see the real Switch 2. But if not, I'm not really too uh, bummed out over it. But whatever. Hopefully that is the case with that Switch 2. But Sony Secret Show. That should be really cool. Um, What do I expect from it? Not much. Maybe a better presentation of what they're supposed to have done with the Pro. I don't know. Do I feel a little bit weird about it? Kind of. But at the same time, I feel it's always necessary to show face. Bop out and show face. Let people see that you're still working and you still care. I think anybody showing up to any of these shows is showing respect for the show, showing respect for your consumer, because you never want your fan base to not be represented when it's big shows. So this is a big show, and, you know, Tokyo Game Show is dope. Well, this is the part in the video where I'm going to tell you, if you liked anything, subscribe. And if you want to become a member, do so. They're the lifeblood of the channel. But also, I do live videos daily. I drop them daily. Premiered daily. Live show Friday, where is a community day. And you can come through and you can interact. 
Sometimes my son is there. Sometimes he's not. But the community comes up and shows out. And we play fighting games. We play community games. We have a ball. I'm not going to hold you. That is probably the best aspect of all of this. The community days where you get a chance to have fun and play games with the community. That's what we're about. We're about playing games. We're about to have about getting back to fun. We're about to about putting positivity and laughter back into the scene. Competitiveness. Get to the essence of what we are as gamers. We're competitive people. We're a community that actually helps each other. So let's get back to that. Let's get back to having fun. So nope, you don't have to be a member to come through. Come on through, we play, we games. But if you are a member, remember, members dictate pace. So whatever games you feel like playing, we're definitely going to get into. And I'm going to take that logo, and I'm going to throw it around the Switch too. And I'm going to say for everybody that believes that stuff that they saw today, is it right? Is it wrong? But I want Nintendo to speak up because I want to do what? Try to play the game pass.